Slime molds. What are slime molds? Is it true that this pulsating pile of goo can solve complex math problems faster than machines and put the human brain to shame? How does that make you feel, you weird flabby hairless ape? And how did this slime get a faculty position at a US college? Stay tuned to find out on In the Slime. Despite their name, slime molds are actually not a fungus. Scientists are terrible at naming things, and no one seems to be firing them. These are actually a eukaryotic amoeboid organism. These things are protists, which is the kingdom of life that's just a grab bag of anything that doesn't fit smoothly into bacteria, plants, animals, or fungi. Think of it as life's misc category. There are over 900 species of slime mold, and they live everywhere on the planet. But we're gonna be talking about the plasmodial slime molds because those are the coolest ones and the only ones that I know anything about. Slime molds spend most of their life as a single-celled organism on their own, but under certain conditions, they can combine into a multicellular superorganism. One remarkable species of this goo is Physarum polycephalum. Its supercolony act as one cell with a ton of nuclei that can grow to over a foot in diameter. It explores by sending out gooey tendril webs to feel and fondle its surroundings. The slime mold's ability to survive is based on its ability to find the most efficient path to resources, and because of this, it's developed something that is reminiscent to a form of intelligence. Scientists have been studying its behavior by placing treats strategically around them and watching how they react. When a food item is placed at the start and the end of a maze, they find the shortest route through the puzzle every time. To compare, many humans can't figure out mazes even with a bird's eye view. They took this Darwinian bread talent to find the shortest possible route and put it to the test. They took a map of cities around Tokyo, placed food scraps at locations of all of the cities, and simulated natural boundaries with things that the amoeba doesn't like, like light and dry areas. They then introduced the slime mold to the environment where Tokyo would be. In one day, the slime mold mapped out a route that looked incredibly similar to the real Tokyo transport system that took human engineers years of planning and work to create. The difference was, it was more efficient. They have since then tried it on a lot of other countries' transport systems, and sometimes the slime mold comes back with something completely different and much more efficient than the human version. How does it feel to be called stupid by a pile of goo? They have since used its behavior to create math formulas that may be useful in designing future transport networks. Slime molds also display behavior that looks like they're weighing risk and reward. For example, if the slime mold detects a particularly high quality resource, or if it needs food desperately, it will sometimes go into an uncomfortable environment to retrieve or look for said resources. They're also capable of using information from past experiences to change their behavior, and they can share this information. When it gets in contact with other slime molds, this information can pass on to their new friend. They can learn from each other. They display another type of strange goop memory as well. They leave a slime trail to remember where they've already been. Unlike the trail of slime that I leave wherever I go, this one is actually useful. This allows the slime to keep track of changes in surroundings and when they take place. They're able to keep track of these changes so well that if you subject a slime to hourly stressors, it will begin to recognize when it is happening and brace or try to adapt to avoid the stress. When humans saw this intelligent creature, they thought they had to respect it and treat it with the dignity that all possibly sapient life deserves. Nah, I'm just messing with you. They subjected it to weird and nightmarish experiments in science. They put a slime mold into a robot and it could control the robot like a small biological brain. The slime receives information relayed from sensors on the robots and then directly responds with its own output which is connected to the robot. It still just kind of thought it was a slime though because it would avoid bright areas and actively seek out dark moist areas. There's a decent chance that slime molds are more talented than even you, the viewer. In fact, a researcher taught one slime mold how to kind of play the piano. He rigged the slime up to a circuit that converts sound vibrations from the piano strings into electrical signals, which are then fed through the slime-based circuit to the slime. The slime responds by changing its shape. The change in shape activates the system and creates a signal that goes back to an electromagnet over the piano, vibrating the strings again. So basically, when you play a song, you'd be duetting with the slime mold as it responded to what you played with past information in context like a human musician. It's essentially acting as an electronic component that can remember data, which has many other potential uses that are way more practical than playing the piano, especially because it's both smaller and more efficient than the mechanical components that do the same thing. The reason these feats of intelligence are so incredibly impressive is because they're essentially just a colony of single-celled organisms. They don't even have a brain, or any organs at all. Scientists are baffled as to how they can display these seemingly intelligent behaviors. So many of the things that humans thought made them special about them and their overrated meatballs in their head could be achieved even without a neurological system. Makes you think, doesn't it? Oh wait, you're a human, so nothing makes you think. <laughs>